Well, we're going to talk about faith and healing. Everybody say faith and healing. Faith and healing. Let me say something real quickly. I wasn't planning on doing this, but the Holy Spirit told me a while ago, there is no such thing as a faith healer. Did y'all hear what I said? There is no such thing as a faith healer. How many of you, raise your hand, have you ever heard of a faith healer? Raise your hand if you ever heard of a faith healer. Well, he claims to be a faith healer. Or, well, that person is a faith healer. No, there's no such thing as a faith healer. There's faith and there's healing. Now, notice this in 3 John verse 2. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things. That word wish in the Greek is also translated pray elsewhere. So you're not changing anything, taking away or adding to by saying I pray. The Greek word is literally translated pray in other places. So John is saying, I wish or pray above all things that you may prosper and what? Be in hell. Now even as, everybody say even as. There's the key, there's the key in that verse right there, even as. To the same degree according to at your mind being renewed with the word of God. As your soul prospers. Your soul, listen to me carefully, Paul prayed that we would be sanctified, spirit, soul, and body. God is a spirit. God created man in his own image. Therefore, man is a spirit. He has a soul, which is his mind, his will, his emotion, and lives in a body. At the moment of the new birth, it is the spirit of man that is born again and receives eternal life. The Lord tells us you've got to do something with your mind. You've got to renew it. And you've got to do something with your body. You've got to present it to God as a living sacrifice. Now, I don't want to get into that right now. But I wanted to say that because I want you to understand that when he says, even as your soul prospers, he's saying, the, James is saying the same thing that Paul was saying. He said, don't be conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. A new man needs a new mind. If you're a new creature in Christ, then God wants you to have a new mind, a new mindset, a new way of thinking. Because when you continue to think the way you thought before you got saved, listen to me, even though you are saved now, you will still be defeated because you haven't renewed your mind. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right? It's important that you understand that if you're going to live in divine help, then you've got to get your mind renewed with God's Word, you've got to think like God thinks concerning divine healing. Amen? Amen? I say divine healing because it comes from heaven. It comes from the Lord above. Look with me, please, at two places. First John 3, 8, and then we're going to go immediately to Acts 10, 38. But in First John 3, 8, the Bible says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, notice the mention of sin here, okay? And then John writes that the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Well, we know that sin is a work of the devil, right? But what else is a work of the devil? Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I want you to see that sin and sickness go hand in hand. John says, Jesus, he said, he that sinneth, you know, is of the devil. The devil sinned for the beginning. And then he says, the purpose of the Son of God coming was to destroy the works of the devil, which is obvious when you read that verse that he's talking about sin and sin being, listen to me carefully now, the very root of all the other works of the devil. Yes. Right? Amen. Because sin is what opened the door from the very beginning. Yes. Paul makes that very clear in Romans chapter 5. That sin is what opened the door. To death. Death is at work in the world. But here's the secret. Paul said that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Right? Sickness leads to death. Very often sickness leads to death. Right? Now, having said that, that he destroyed the works of the devil, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Again, listen to what? Peter says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good. Everybody say doing good. good. When he was out doing good, what was part of that? Healing those that were what? Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Listen to me. God is with us. God is still with us. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you to the end of the world. Amen? Sin and sickness go hand in hand. God is no more the author of sickness than he is the author of sin. Now, I'm telling you that because a lot of you have been taught all your life that God put sickness on people for various reasons. For example, I've heard people say, well, God put this disease on me to humble me. Well, first of all, the Bible says to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, right? I've heard people say, well, God put it on me to teach me a lesson. My Bible says that Jesus said the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. He will lead you into all the truth. So God doesn't need sickness to humble you or to teach you when you got the Holy Ghost and you got the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just ridiculous some of the religious beliefs that people have in their hearts and in their minds that are keeping them from being able to receive what God has for them. Let me ask you a question. Let's get this settled. Is there anybody in this place who wants to live a life of sin? Anybody at all? Because we will pray and do our best to get you to this altar. <laughs> because sin destroys your life. Is there anybody in this house that literally wants to live a life of sickness? Do you want to be sick? Do you want to have incurable diseases? Cancer and all that work of the devil? No, nobody does, right? Now, our text says that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. And that he healed people that was oppressed of the devil. For those of you who are taking notes, the word oppressed comes from a Greek word meaning to exercise dominion against. The Greek word there, translated oppressed, means to exercise dominion against. So when you, listen to me, when sickness and disease is in your body, it is the devil wanting to exercise dominion over you. And nobody, no believer wants that, Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 4, 23. Or just listen. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What was he preaching? The gospel of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 9, 35 says, every sickness and every disease. Every sickness and every disease. Thank God for modern medicine. Amen? Listen to me carefully. But there are some sicknesses, some diseases that will not respond to any type of medicine or any type of medical treatment. That's the reason they call them incurable. But with God, nothing is impossible. Y'all got that? Look with me in John chapter 5, and let's read the first four verses. The Gospel of John in chapter 5. The first four verses. I want to give them time to, uh, we got new people training, and thank God, new, we got new people that are training the cameras and the sound system and all, every department. Thank the Lord. Amen. Y'all responded to the messages that we preached on Wednesday night about the ministry of help, and I am so thankful. Now, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, everybody say first. first. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever. Say whatsoever. whatsoever. Of whatsoever disease that he had. Yes. Now notice that. Whosoever. The first person. God is no respecter of person. A while back, I preached a, a, a series of messages called Miracles on Demand. Y'all remember that? And I told you, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to wait your turn. You can break in line, praise God. When you say, I want it now, hallelujah. Amen. When you say, it's my healing and I want it now, 
Jump up and come on down. Right then. I mean, right that moment. Go ahead and lay hands on you. God will heal you right then. Amen. Smith Wigglesworth, called the apostle of faith, who preached all over the world, had over 20 people raised from the dead, would often get up in a service. I'm talking about with huge audiences, thousands of people. And he would say, the first one here gets healed. I mean, people would not literally just run trying to get there to the front. And they would see all kind of miracles. Why? Well, because he had that kind of boldness. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen. That's the reason I'm telling you, we have got to understand that just because you were taught a certain order of things in church doesn't mean it was right. Doesn't mean it was the right way to do it. Amen? Amen. In other words, you may think, well, I'll be out of order if I get up and walk down to a pastor preacher. No, you won't. If you've got, you fa- you got your faith turned on and you say, I'm ready to get delivered, I'm ready to get healed, I'm ready to get saved, I'm ready to get filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, yeah. You don't have to wait. God's an on-time God. A present tense God. Come on, folks. Hallelujah. And so, let's read on. Certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. Jesus saw him lie, knew that he'd been that way a long time. He said, will you be made whole? The man answered, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. What did Jesus say to him? Rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, go down to verse 14 because I want you all to see this. When you go down to verse 14, when Jesus finds the man... In the temple, he said, Behold, you are made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Mm. Now, Proverbs 26, verse 2 says that the curse causeless shall not come. The curse does not come without a cause. Galatians 3, 13 tells us that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. If you go back to Deuteronomy 28, starting with verse 15, read the rest of the chapter, it will tell you the curse of the law. Every sickness and every disease known to mankind, listen to me, and even those not known that are coming on, on, upon the face of the earth is a part of the curse which you have already been delivered from by the Lord Jesus Christ. But in this case, the man's cause was sin. The cause of his sickness, whatever that w- it was, it, the cause was sin. And Jesus said, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto you. Right. Now, I remember this preacher that I'm familiar with. He was um, holding a revival. And one night he gave an altar call and people came down for prayer. There was a young woman in that church who had lived a very promiscuous lifestyle for several years. From that, she had a, a, she had gotten this disease. Doctors had had to do surgery, moved all her reproductive organs. Therefore, of course, they said you'll never be able to have children now because you don't have the equipment you need to have children because they took it out. Well, the preacher was standing in front of her, and all of a sudden, by the Holy Ghost, he said, he quoted the scripture, which is right out of Psalm 107, 17. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquity, are afflicted. Immediately when he said that, that young woman began to cry out, I'm that fool, I'm that fool, I'm that fool. Fell on her knees, repented, got born again. Filled with the Holy Ghost, she laid his hands on her. She was immediately healed. God put back restored her reproductive organs that the doctors had took out and wasn't long after that because she was already married, she was pregnant. Our God is a God of restoration. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Our God is a God of restoration and he wants to restore everything that the devil has took from you. Say it out loud, it's never too late for God. Hallelujah. If you don't believe me, just ask Lazarus when you get to heaven. Come on now. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying, don't, any, don't anyone go out and say, well, pastor said, if you've got sickness, then you, it's because you've been sinning. That is not what I said. Right. This case here, right. that was the case here. 
But not every person who is attacked with sickness or disease, it, it's not because of some sin in their life. All right? But if it is the root cause, then repent of it and God will heal you. You will not believe the people that have opened themselves up to the attacks of the devil because of the sin that they've been living in for so long. In our all around us, there's something going on in the realm of the spirit. Okay? And this church has got to be ready. Amen. I'm saying this church has got to get ready. Because the Lord spoke to me a while back. There's coming a move of God yes. right here. Yes. And it's going to start right here. Amen. And it's already happening. Yes. There's people hungry. There's people looking for answers. And most of the churches they're going to don't have the answers they need. Right. Because they won't preach the truth to them about God's word. Right. Okay? God loves you. But there are some requirements. Don't let anybody deceive you with this greasy grace message that's out there. Telling you you can live any kind of way and have God's best. It's not going to happen, folks. Amen? The grace of God has appeared to all men, bringing salvation, bringing healing, bringing deliverance. But grace requires some stuff of us as well. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Hallelujah. He was in the, here's Jesus. He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. How many know it was his custom to go to the synagogue? It was his custom to go to church. We need corporate worship. It needs to become a really good habit in your life to be in the house of God. Not forsaking the assembly of yourselves, as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. Amen? And that goes for everybody watching online that's close enough to be here on a regular basis. We've got Eve members that live so and they're praying for us. They come when they can. They watch every service pretty much. And they can't. But there's people that live 10, 15, 20 minutes away that are so lazy. Well, I'll just stay in my pajamas and have church today. <laughs> Somebody bring me my coffee. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. How long had this woman been sick? 18 years, folks, she was bowed together. She could in no wise lift up herself. Now, the complete Jewish Bible says she had a spirit which had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent double. The New American Standard Bible says she had a sickness caused by a spirit. Well, Jesus, listen, when he ministered to her, he cast that demon out. Yeah, a demon in her body. Say it out loud, a demon in her body. That just sounds weird to people, don't it? Yeah. Why? Because they've been taught to believe that demons don't exist. Well, let me tell you something. God is real and the devil is real. There are angels that are real and there are demons that are real. And they are working constantly to draw you to one side or the other. That's the reason you've got to make your decision, choose you this day whom you will serve. When you get up every morning, choose. Today, I'm going to serve the Lord. Because this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to be glad in it. I'm going to walk with God today. I'm going to fellowship with God today. I'm going to be led by the Holy Ghost today. I'm going to do the will of God today. You choose every day, right? Now, here's this woman who has this demon. Now, look with me in verse 13. Because I want you all to see, Jesus laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight. What did Jesus do? He laid his hands on her. And when he laid his hands on her, immediately she was made straight. How can laying your hands on somebody cause them, a person who's bent double for 18 years to be made straight? Because of the anointing. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Yeah. Now, last week, I took you specifically into the prophet Isaiah and showed you the reference that Isaiah was making concerning destroying the yoke of poverty off your life. But here we find that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good, healing people that were oppressed of the devil. That means the anointing destroyed the yoke of sickness and disease in the people's lives. Immediately, this woman was healed. We've got to start believing like they believed in Bible days. 
We've got to believe that the Word of God is true. We've got to act like it's true, and we'll see the same results that they got. Immediately she was made straight. Verse 16. Verse 16. And ought not this woman being a what? Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are. When that woman who had the issue of blood touched Jesus' garment and was healed, he said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Never forget who you are. If you are born again, you are a son or a daughter of Almighty God. And Jesus is your older brother. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. You're part of the same family. We have the same Father. Amen? And so he said, ought not this woman? Doesn't she have a right? She is a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. Everybody say, the devil bound her. It was the devil's work, folks. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. The devil bound this woman for 18 years. Isn't that amazing, folks? How folks, how the church has twisted things over the last 2,000 years. It used to be that the devil made people sick and the Lord healed them. And now you've got preachers all over America telling their congregations that God's the one that made them sick. Strange, isn't it? Whom Satan is bound. That Greek word means tied up. Did you know that Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes, Come on now. Yes. I'm telling y'all what. People through the ages have, have thought for hundreds and hundreds of years have thought that somehow sickness was the will of God. There was a man by the name of John Alexander Dowie. He was born in 1847 in Scotland. And uh, before he came to America, because he, he uh, at one point, you know, he became a well-known minister here in America. But before all of that, as a pastor of a church there in, in, in his, his home country, there in Scotland, bubonic plague had broke out. He had already buried 40 members. He had 30 more that was sick and dying. And, of course, the doctor said there's no cure. And he said, I wondered, where is he that used to heal his suffering children? He said, I knew that God was able. His hand had not been shortened, yet many faithful Christians are dying. You know, they would have fever and convulsions and delirious and, a, you know, bloody froth coming from their mouth. And she said one day, he said, I prayed with tears for a message from God. And he said, suddenly, Acts 10, 38, stood before me, all radiant with light, revealing Satan as the defiler and Christ as the healer. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil's the one who wants to defile your body. But it's the Lord who is your healer. Amen. He said, God help me now to preach that word to all the dying. Tell them how it's Satan that defiles and Jesus still delivers for he is just the same today. He said, no sooner had I prayed that, there was a knock at the door. There was two young men and one of them said, come at once. Mary is dying. Come and pray. He said, I got to the house and there is this young lady named Mary. She's lying in the bed. She's groaning, grinding her teeth in agony. He said, that bloody froth mix was, you know, it's coming from her mouth. There was a doctor who was a Christian man now there in the room. He walked over to Dowie and he said, sir, are not God's ways mysterious? Are you kidding me? Y'all wouldn't believe how many times I heard something very similar to that. When I was a boy growing up, his ways mysterious to perform. In other words, he was saying this was God's work. Dowie said, God's ways, how dare you call that God's way of bringing his children home from earth to heaven? No, sir. That is the devil's work, and it's time we called on him who came to destroy the work of the devil and save the child. Now we ask the, the Christian doctor, can you pray the prayer of faith that saves the sick? The doctor said, you are much too excited, sir. 
It's best to say God's will be done. That is nothing but dead religious talk is what that is. Because faith in God demands something of us. It demands a boldness to act on the word of God. It's easy to just blame everything on God. Well, it's just God's will. God's will be done. Many years ago, not very far from here, a child was killed by a school bus. While I was among a group of ministers, they were talking about this from different denominations. It was a breakfast-type meeting of ministers. And, and one of them said, well, you know, it wouldn't happen if it was not God's will. I said, are you serious? And he said, well, it couldn't happen. Everything that happens is God's will. And if it wasn't God's will, then it wouldn't happen. And, of course, I challenged him on that ridiculous believing. A lot of people believe this. This is the will of God that none should perish. And that all would come to repentance, but everybody doesn't come to repentance. And a lot of people do perish. It's a choice. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish. He didn't say would not. He said should not. He doesn't want you to. Right? But have everlasting life. It's a choice that we make. I stand at the door and knock. Open the door. He'll come in. He's not going to keep the door down and force his way in. He's not going to make you get saved. He's not going to make you get healed. He's not going to make you get delivered from those drugs and alcohol and everything else that got you bound. But if you will simply say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I open the door and I invite you in to my heart and into my life. He'll save you. He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll heal you. He'll fix your marriage. He'll fix what you made a mess out of. And boy, haven't we made some messes out of stuff before But thank God he's not a one-route God. He's not a one-time God. You might have messed up, listen to me, and think, well, he gave me the opportunity before, and I got things right, and then I messed it all up again. No, he'll come right back when you open the door, and he'll fix everything again with your cooperation. Amen? So, Dowie was mad by now. Because when the man said it's best to say God's will be done, he said, it is not so. No will of God sends such cruelty, and I shall never say God's will be done to Satan's works, which God's own son came to destroy. And this is one of them. He asked the mother of the young lady, why did you send for me? That's a key right there. Listen to me carefully. That's a key. Why did you send for me? Don't call me to your loved one's bedside if all you want me to do is prepare them to die. Did you hear what I said? If you want somebody to help them get healed and to live, give me a call. But if all you're calling for me is a, just, just to make them comfortable, well, you can do that. Best you can. No, I, I don't. I don't come, listen to me, the church, the people of God should not be coming to fit in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We ought to be coming to take over. We got to have the authority. We got to have the understanding that death, listen to me, has been defeated. Satan has been defeated. The devil is under our feet. Sickness and disease is under our feet. Well, now we prayed. He said, our father... And I'm going I'm to read it to you in his words. Our Father, help. Hear and heal, O eternal one. From all disease and death, deliver this sweet child of thine. I rest upon your word. We claim the promise now. Now I want you to listen as he reminds God of his word. The word is true. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Then heal her now. The word is true. I am the Lord, I change not. Unchanging God, prove thyself the healer now. The word is true. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And I believe and I lay my hands in Jesus' name on her and I claim this promise now. Thy word is true. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. Trusting in thee alone I cry. Save her now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The girl 
immediately fell asleep. The fever left. She woke up not long after that. She stretched and she said, I feel so well and I'm hungry. She ate. She fell back asleep. She was totally healed. Dowie went and prayed for her brother and her sister that were also in bed dying. Both of them were healed and he did not bury, bury another church member. There were two who had died like the day before. He, 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 he buried them. But as far as the living, he did not bury another church member. Everyone was healed that he laid his hands on. Amen. Hallelujah. We got to get back to this, folks. We got to get back to the book of Acts. We got to get back to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Doing the works of Jesus. You know, as I was talking to the Lord about this, because it just kept coming to my spirit about healing. You know, people's got to understand. Jesus himself was a man approved of God. Did y'all understand this? Jesus did not heal the sick as God. He healed them as the Son of Man, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus said, it's not I that does the work. It's the Father in me who does the work. And the Holy Ghost said to me, he said in the same way that Jesus said, it's not I that does the work, the Father in me. He said, you've got to let the people know that it's not you, folks. It's not me that does the work. It's the Father in me that does the work. And Jesus said, if you believe on me, the works that I do, you'll do also. And the Lord told me, he said, not only will you do the same works, you'll do it the same way that Jesus did. Amen? Look at this, folks. Acts 2.22. In Acts 2.22, here's the man of God is preaching now. And Peter says, you men of ministry, y'all got to understand something. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a God. Is that what it says? Are y'all reading it behind me? What does it say? A, a what? A man. a man. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Why did Jesus have to be anointed? Because he came as a man. Stick with me here. This is important that you know this. He ministered as a man anointed with the Holy Ghost and not as God. Look with me in Philippians 2, verses 6, 7, and 8. Philippians chapter 2, verses 6, 7, and 8. Jesus was a man approved of God. He had God's stamp of approval upon him. How? Signs, wonders, and miracles. Which God did through him. Which God did through him. God wants to do miracles through you, Logan. Yes. Timmy, listen. God wants to do miracles through you. Yes. Well, I thought there was only the apostles, prophets, and evangelists, the pastor, teacher could do it. No, 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 no. And these signs shall follow those that what? Believe. believe. Yes. In my name. Do you believe in his name? Yes. Well, in his name, he said these signs will follow you. Amen. Right. He said you'll cast out devil. That means you'll break the power of the devil off of people's lives. Yes. Speak with new tongues. He said, if you drink any deadly thing, it won't harm you. You'll take up serpents like Paul was accidentally bitten. He shook it off in the fire. He said, you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Yes. Hallelujah. Now watch this. He starts this off by saying, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He, let me, let me, let me read the rest of it first. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man, being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself, became obedient to death in the death of the cross. In verse 7, one translation says, he stripped himself of his mighty power and glory when he came into this world and he became as men. Right before Jesus went to the cross, praying in the garden, he said, Lord, he said, now it's time for you to restore me to the glory that I had before I came. In other words, he emptied himself of all that power and glory. 
He came to this earth as a man. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. For those of you who are taking notes and want to do some study, just jot this down. Luke 3.22 tells us that Jesus was anointed when he was about 30 years old. The Holy Ghost came upon him when he was about 30 years old. And if you'll go back and read, John chapter 2 tells us when he turned the water into wine was the first miracle. And if you'll go back and read and trace it, you'll see from the first chapter when he was anointed with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came upon him, it'll say the next day. And it tells you what happened that day. Then it'll say the next day. It'll tell you what happened that day. And then verse 1 of John 2 says, and the third day. Oh, my goodness. And the third day. Let me tell you all something. Glory to God. We are nearing that time of the third day where God is going to pour out his glory in a way that is unprecedented in this earth. Are y'all listening to what I'm telling you? Listen to me. It was on that third day that he performed his first miracle. But the Bible says he was about 30 years old. Well, let me ask you something. Was he not the son of God when he was 20 years old? Why didn't he do miracles then? How about when he was 25? Was he not the son of God just as much as he was when he was 30? Why didn't he do miracles? Huh? Because he couldn't. Got quiet just then. So, pastor, you're trying to tell me that when Jesus was 25 years old, he couldn't do any miracles. Exactly. You know why? Because he wasn't anointed. But now the Holy Ghost has come upon him. He's anointed. God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. Then he started going around doing good, healing people that were oppressed of the devil. People say, well, why should I speak in tongues? Oh, my, my, my. I, I just, oh, I wish I had time. I wish we could just kind of put this aside for about an hour and I come over here and preach over the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then we get back to this. Let me tell you something. You say, well, I'm born again. Well, thank God. You're going to heaven. Amen. You have eternal life. But don't you want the power? And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That's the reason the disciples, they went and they waited in Jerusalem until the day of Pentecost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They received power. Hallelujah. Luke wrote these words. The heaven was open. The Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Now, when I was a young minister, I just I hadn't been saved that long when God called me to preach. I started reading the word. And I'm telling y'all what, I wanted this anointing to minister to the sick. The Bible says in Hebrews 6, 12, to be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. The Amplified says, who are now inheriting the promises. And so I'm, I'm digging, I'm studying, I'm reading. I was born again. I knew I was just as saved as anybody. Loved the Lord with all my heart. Couldn't, I mean, just refused to miss church services. Couldn't get enough of reading the Bible, praying and seeking God. But I wanted this power. And I found out about the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the, in the Bible. And I started asking questions. And people said, oh, stay away from all that stuff. Them tongue talkers, you know, that's of the devil. And all that kind of nonsense. But you know what? I pressed on in. I pressed in. I, I was so desperate, I went to one of these wild Pentecostal camp meetings. Holiness Baptist camp meeting. Some friends of mine that I worked with at the General Motors plant was telling me about it. A couple of them went to the Holiness Baptist churches. They had started a revival in a small church and it had outgrown it. They'd moved to a bigger church. They'd done this two or three times. This thing had been going on for weeks and weeks. Finally, they moved the revival to the campground, which was the biggest building they had in the entire area. I had to drive about an hour to get there. And when I got there, I don't know how many people was there. I mean, it could have been 1,000, it could have been 2,000. It was just a real big place and it was packed. I mean, absolutely packed. And so, you know, here I am. I mean, it's a young Baptist boy. And I'm among all these Pentecostal people. And so I just kind of slip in the very back and, you know, have a seat. And one of those guys told the preacher up front that there was a Baptist guy here wanting to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Can y'all imagine that? And they called me down front. 
And boy, I mean, they told me to kneel down right here. And boy, and I am not kidding y'all. They told me to turn loose, let go, hold on. They told me everything to do and not to do. It was cold winter time. Place was hot inside. And I've always said this. The only thing I got out of that whole experience was a sore throat. Because I was soaking wet when I walked out that night in that cold air. And the next morning I couldn't hardly talk. But the Holy Ghost said to me, he gave me two scriptures. How much more would the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Amen. And then he gave me another one. And when you pray, believe you receive. I knelt down on my knees in my bedroom. And I said, Heavenly Father, I ask you to give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe I receive and I thank you for it. Hallelujah. And every time I thought about it, I just threw my hands up. Thank you, Lord. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Amen. So I go back to work, and one of the guys asked me, said, you got the Holy Ghost yet? I said, I sure have. He said, you spoke in tongues yet? I said, nope, but I will. Well, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. I said, yes, I have. I said, you don't understand faith. I said, God taught me faith. God taught me that when I pray, knowing that it's his will, to believe I receive it right then and just thank him for it. Like Abraham, give glory to God. Like Abraham, just give glory to God. Give glory to God. Abraham just walked around and gave glory to God. Thank you, Lord, that Sarah's pregnant. Hallelujah. 90 years old, my wife is pregnant. Glory to God. There ain't no baby bump. There's nothing there. But he's just giving glory to God. Why? Because he believed that God was able to perform what he had promised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said, yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. And it wasn't but a couple nights later. I'm driving home in the second ship about midnight. Got my old orange 66 Chevrolet pickup going. I got my eight-track tape in. Dad is home and praise the singing. And I'm just worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden, out of my belly, from way down on the inside, flowed a river out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. And I began to speak in tongues, and I've been speaking in tongues ever since. And I dare say I probably speak in tongues more than you all. Hallelujah. My wife says I wake her up in the middle of the night praying in tongues. Are y'all hearing me? Why? Because my spirit is alive unto God. I reckon, my, listen to me, I reckon myself alive unto God through Jesus Christ my Lord. Now stay with me here, okay? So I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I wanted more of this power. I wanted to walk in this anointing. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. I wanted to know how the healing anointing works. I want to know how it's activated. I, want to know how the anoint, I wanted to know how the anointing is put into operation. What makes it work? Now, let's go quickly. Look at Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Now, y'all remember this. If you want to just scroll through it, I'm not even going to read it. Everybody here is pretty familiar with it anyway. Mark 5, beginning verse 25. Now, here's a woman who has issue of blood. She's been suffering from this hemorrhaging for about 12 years. She heard of Jesus. She heard the reports of Jesus. And so she released her faith, and she made a, a declaration of faith. If I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Well, she snuck up behind him, and she pressed through the crowd, because here she is, according to the law, she's not supposed to be in public. And if she does go in public, she's supposed to cry, unclean, unclean, so everybody get away from her. But she doesn't do that. She slips up behind him, touches the hem of his garment, thinking that's it. She tries to get away. Jesus stops. You know why? Because the Bible says that he felt virtue go out of him. He was conscious of something going out of him, and she was conscious of something going into her. Hallelujah. What was it? The anointing. If you're anointed, you can't wear a shirt very long without the anointing getting in it too. Come on now. Some of you got husbands and wives acting like the devil. Bring me a cloth. Let me lay my hands on it with anointing on me like this. Go put it inside their pillar. And when they lay down, expect the power of God to hit them. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And so what happens? This woman tells the whole story. And Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you whole. When it says virtue went out of him, that word is a little misleading. It's a Greek word, dunamis, which means miraculous power or the anointing. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes. Listen to me, folks. Mm. There, there was a transfer of the anointing. See, I want you all to understand this. The anointing is transferable. It can be transferred from one person to another. It can be transferred from one person to you, from you to someone else. Yeah. Amen? Oh, yeah. And the anointing can get weaker or the anointing can get stronger. Oh, yeah. The more time you spend with the Lord, in His presence, yeah. in His Word, speaking His Word, yeah. living a holy life, the anointing gets stronger and stronger upon you. Amen? Yeah. And it's transferable, number one, through the laying of hands, and number two, through handkerchiefs and cloths. Hallelujah. See, because I was so hungry for these things and praying, as a young man, as a young minister, God began to open doors for me. And y'all have heard me. Some of you have heard many times. Others maybe heard it once or twice. Some of you have never, never heard it at all. But one of the first great occurrences of miracles happened when I was a young man that worked at a gas station where I bought my gas. And here's this young man. He's living with a woman. He has helped to raise her five-year-old son from a baby. He's the only father this child has ever known, even though he's not the biological father. They're not saved. They don't go to church. Doesn't claim to be a Christian. But I started witnessing to him. Well, after a while, you know, he was very respectful, and he listened to me when I witnessed to him, trying to get him to come to church. But one day he said, our son, Jimmy has a brain tumor. I'd heard about it, but I didn't know it was him. I didn't know it was them. I'd heard about a boy in the community that had a brain tumor, and the doctor said he was going to die. And, and there were churches and people trying to raise money for the family. And so he said, the doctor said he has a brain tumor about the size of an orange uh, on his brain. It's inoperable. Nothing can be done. That he'll be dead in six months or less. Will you pray for him? I said, yes. Kept my promise. Was praying at the church. God spoke to me, said, this is on a Monday night, men meeting to pray, and the Lord said, go pray for Jimmy. So I tapped the guy on the shoulder. I said, can you go with me? We went to the house. Long story short, I said, God told me to lay hands on Jimmy if you'll allow me. I'm going to pray, and God's going to heal him. She turned her back on me and went to crying. She thought I was a nutcase. But, but listen to me, Dudley, the man, the lost sinner, Dudley, did y'all hear me? The man who's shacking up with this woman living this sin? He said, I believe you, preacher. He said, go ahead. I laid my hands on Jimmy. Jimmy just stood there just like this. I laid my hands on him. I cursed that cancer, that tumor. I commanded it to die, dry up, come out of his body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I thanked him. He thanked me, and I left. About two weeks later, I pull up to the gas station. He's inside. He runs to my car. Go, preacher, 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 you're not going to believe this. I said, well, calm down. Tell me. He said, we just got back from the doctor today. They run more tests. They cannot find the tumor. They said that all they could find is a little scar on the brain where the tumor was. I believe God left that there just for evidence. So they couldn't say, well, it was never there to start with. No, the doctor said, it's gone. They said, we have the old x-rays. Here it is. And here's the new ones. He's healed. He's whole. Hallelujah. Is it God good? Now, I'm just telling you all right now, the anointing is tangible. Not only is it transferable, it is tangible. What does that mean? Capable of being touched. You got that? Perceptible to the touch. It's capable of being touched and perceptible to the touch. See, not only did Jesus know that virtue or power had gone out of him, but verse 29 says she felt in her body that she was healed. That's powerful, folks. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you, we serve a good God. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. You know, folks, I am so thankful for divine connections. I am so thankful for divine connections. Because in my pursuit of the power of God, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I need somebody to help me. Because all these preachers are telling me one thing or another. None of it lines up with your word. I need help. He said, hook your TV antenna to the back of your stereo. I did. I turned it on. I heard a man teaching on the authority of the believer. I'd never heard of him in my life. Y'all have to understand, I didn't grow up in church. I didn't know that if you'd have said charismatic to me, I thought you was cussing. I didn't even know what charismatic was. I didn't know what Pentecostal was. I'd have said Pentecostal what? 
I don't know. I didn't know what Pentecost was. I didn't know none of this stuff, folks. Okay. I mean, I was so ignorant concerning spiritual things. It's just crazy. But yet, when I heard this man preaching on the radio, I knew this is why God told me to do this. And at the end of the message, he gave his name, Kenneth E. Hagan, a prophet of the Lord. I sent off for the books and teachings, wound up going to my wife and I, going to the school, graduating there. But I want y'all to hear something. Brother Hagan, September the 2nd, 1950, Jesus appeared to him in a vision. And Jesus said, look at Luke 4, put it up for everybody to see, verses 17 and 18. Jesus came into his room, sat down and talked to him for about an hour and a half. And he said, look at Luke 4, 17 and 18. Now, it says, he read, he found the place where it was written, and he began to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now, watch this. Jesus said to Brother Hagin, I read from Isaiah that the Spirit of the Lord was upon me, because he had anointed me, to do those things among them. I didn't just preach it in Nazareth. I preached it everywhere I went. It was the first message I preached. I'm anointed. Those who believed what I told them would receive their healing, and those who didn't believe it didn't receive healing. How many know that there was people that day that did not receive him there in Luke chapter 4? As a matter of fact, it says in Mark chapter 6, there, he could do no mighty works because of their unbelief, right? See, unbelief stops the anointing from flowing, from working. One thing everybody needs to understand, you've got to cooperate with the anointing. Amen? By using your faith. And I'm going to be talking a lot about this, faith and healing. How to get your faith working. How to release your faith. What faith is all about. Faith is more than just saying, I believe in God. It is a powerful force that works in the heart, in the life, through the mouth of the believer. Yes. Amen? Now, watch this. Because I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes I've laid hands on people, and it's like laying hands on a doorknob or a brick. There's no reception whatsoever. Amen? So, Jesus laid the finger of his right hand in the palm of each of Brother Hagin's hands, he said, they begin to burn. Jesus said, kneel down before me. He put his hand on his head, and he said, I have called thee, I have anointed thee, and I have given unto thee a special anointing to minister to the sick. Listen, there's a, there's a, a connection, folks. A great connection between believing what the Lord says and receiving from him. Even in this church, even in this service, right now, there is a connection between believing what you are hearing and receiving from God. Okay? Jesus went on to say, this is the primary way you are to minister. However, this anointing will not work unless you tell the people exactly what I told you. Tell them you saw me. I spoke to you. Laid the finger of my right hand in the palms of each of your hands. Tell them the healing anointing is in your hands. Tell them that I told you to tell them that if they'll believe, then that power will flow from your hands into their bodies and will drive out their sickness and diseases and will affect a healing and a cure in them. The reason I want you to tell the people what I told you is so they can believe it and have faith. If they don't believe, then they'll not receive. Now that woman in Mark chapter 5 it was her faith that gave action to the power. Yeah. Do you hear what I said? It was her faith that activated the anointing. That's the reason Jesus didn't say, Daughter, my faith has made you whole. Daughter, my power has made you whole. He said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. Now, folks, listen to me. Your faith will make you whole. Amen. Your faith will make you whole physically, mentally, financially, your family, everything. But it's your faith. That's got to be released to activate the power of God, the anointing that destroys the yokes. I remember early in my own ministry, I began to have terrible pains 
running down my lower back, my, all the way down my left leg to my foot. I mean, I'd have to sleep at night in a fetal position to relieve the pain. I finally went to a doctor, and he said it was sciatica. He treated it with uh, prescriptions. Nothing helped it at all. But in the meantime, I was listening to Brother Hagin. God had connected me with Brother Hagin, so I'm listening to him. I'm buying his books. I'm listening to his tapes. And so I said, you know what I'm going to do? I just found out. He's going to be in Birmingham, Alabama at a crusade. And so I went to that crusade. And I'll never forget this because I had heard Brother Hagin say things like, if you're going to be here several nights, if you can, wait, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Build your faith before you come to have hands laid on you. And so I decided, you know what, we're going to be here several days. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to listen. And then when the time is right, I'm going to go forward, have hands laid on me. And I'm going to re receive by faith. Well, it was like the first or second night of the crusade, Brother Hagin had gave an uh, altar call to pray for the sick. I don't think uh, a lot of the people listened to him, you know, when he said to wait if you can. Because the place literally, I mean, this is the Civic Center in Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. Literally, the people filled the front from wall to wall, all the way down that wall, across the back, all the way down this one. I mean, it was, I'd say at least half the people in the place, if not more, came in the prayer line. And when Brother Hagin saw the crowd, he said, now listen, y'all see how many people's here. I can't take the time individually to speak to you, to pray, you know, with you. He said, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm just going to go down the, 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 the prayer line here. He said, and I'll just touch you. And I'll say something like, in the name of Jesus, or be healed. And he said, that's what I'm going to do. He said, it's up to you to receive. He said, because once I lay my hands on you, I've done my part. It's up to you to receive the anointing. Amen. And so he's going down through there, and there's a man in a wheelchair. And he touches the man in the wheelchair. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed. He touched the man in the wheelchair, and I'm watching the guy in the wheelchair. All of a sudden, the guy's sitting there in the wheelchair, and all I can remember is it looked like he went like that. And when he did, well, the only way I can describe it, it looked to me like that there was a great big giant on each side of him that literally grabbed him and threw him out of the chair. Because when he hit the floor, he was running. Well, the very next day, we had got to know some of the other ministers while we was out there. The very next day, a couple of the guys had gone to the mall shopping. And while there, they recognized the man who had been healed the night before in the wheelchair. So they stopped him, and they said, hey, aren't you the guy that was prayed for last night that was in the wheelchair? And he said, yes, sir, that's me. He said, do you mind telling us your story? And he said, not at all. He said, I've been in that wheelchair like seven, eight, nine years, something like that. He said, I lived a life of crime. He said, one night I got in a shootout with the policeman. He said, a bullet hit my spine, severed my spine. He said, the doctor told me I'd never walk again, and I've been in that wheelchair ever since. He said, but in the meantime, he said, I got saved, started going to this church, the one that actually sponsored Brother Hagin. And he said, and so I've just been standing on God's word and praying and believing the word. And he said, and when he touched me, and folks, I'm telling you what, I believe it was angels. I firmly believe it was angels. Because it looked like literally supernaturally he was lifted out of that chair. Instantly healed. Think about that. Well, the last night of the, uh, of the crusade, I said, well, I'm ready now. So when he gave the order call, I went down, Brother Hagin. He's laying hands on people. Now watch this. This is so funny. He's laying hands on people, and everybody touches falls. Everybody touches falls. I'm kind of dead center of the auditorium, you know. And everybody, from all the way down there, falling, 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 touch me, nothing. <laughs> fall, 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 fall. <laughs> but you know what? That didn't faze me a bit. Amen. You ain't got to fake anything. Falling is not going to get you healing. Amen. This faith is going to get you healing. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. I have fell out many times in the spirit, okay? But that night, I didn't feel anything. You know why? Because I had already told the Lord before I went forward. I said, Lord, I am so fed up with people who walk by their feelings. It doesn't matter to me if I feel anything. I'm going to act on your word. Amen. Your word said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
that when you pray, believe, you receive, and you shall have. So when he lays hands on me, I'm simply going to take it by faith. So when he touched me, I went straight back to my seat, grabbed my notebook, wrote down the date, wrote down the time. I wrote it out. I believe. And I wrote out what I believe concerning those two scriptures that I gave you. And I believe that I received my healing this night. I believe that a healing and cure is working in my body. I believe that by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Therefore, I am healed. It was the very next week after I got home, my wife and I took our children uh, on vacation in Florida. And right in the middle of Disney World, all of a sudden, with me carrying a small child in my arm, all of a sudden it dawned on me in the middle of the day that I had not had one single pain. I stopped turning to my wife and I said, I just realized the healing manifested in my body. People say, well, you were healed that day. No, I wasn't healed that day. It manifested that day. Listen to me, folks. Jesus provided my healing from the foundation of the world. Jesus took my sickness and diseases on the cross of Calvary. I believe that I received it in that meeting that night, and it was manifested while on vacation in Florida. But you want me to tell you why? And we're going to close with this. Look at Hebrews 10, 23. Hebrews 10, 23. Hallelujah. Are y'all stirred up? Glory to God. I mean, y'all ought to go out of here just looking for somebody sick. I'm telling you, folks, I work in that General Motors plant, and I'd walk around, and I'd just look for people. If they even looked like they was hurting, can I pray for you? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, after a couple of them got healed, it went long, they came looking for me. <laughs> yeah, I remember this old big tall boy named Mike. He came up to me, and he said, man, he said, pray for me, Brother Ed. He said, I got this migraine headache. I can't hardly see. I'm hurting so bad. So I just reached up and touched. That's the name of Jesus be healed. He shook his head. He looked at me. He said, it's gone. I said, it's supposed to be gone. He said, I know, but it's gone. I said, yeah. That's the reason I prayed for you. I expect it to be gone. Why waste your time, folks? Come on now. It wasn't but a couple of days later, Mike got so excited. He got filled with the Holy Ghost right there on the job. And he took off running. This is a General Motors plant. This is not a little mom and pop shop. This is a General Motors plant. Okay? He runs out the door. There's a field out there. Covers about 100 acres. And Mike is just running. Everybody goes outside. We're watching Mike run. <laughs> running the Holy Ghost. He's just running everywhere. <laughs> and the boss man, they didn't know what to say. They blame it all on me, of course. I said, don't blame it on me. This is Jesus. Amen. This is the power of God. Now, after he laid hands on me, this verse right here became very, very important. Let us hold fast the profession. A lot of translations say confession. It's the same thing. Of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Oh, I cannot tell you the time that people have had hands laid on them. And because something didn't happen in the natural immediately, well, it must not have been God's will for me to be healed. Okay? Amen. So they're not, they're not holding fast their confession of faith. But you know what I did? I wrote it down. I'd read it. And I'd say it time after time, all day long. All day long. I believe. Such such date, such such time, hands were laid on me. I believe I received my healing. I believe a healing cure working in my body. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Lord, I praise you. I give you glory and honor. I am healed. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. Don't quit. Praise God. I know my brother is watching right now. I know you've been through a battle. I know you know I'm talking to you. But God says it's not over. Don't give up. You fight the good fight of faith. You keep standing. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil wants to get you to, to the point that you just in your mind that you're defeated in your mind. Because he knows that's where the battle lies. Well, just keep building yourself up in the word of God. Keep holding fast to the, to the promises of God. Yeah. Ralph, go ahead and move this. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yeah. Tyler, come play something for me, brother. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you would bow your head for just a moment. Is there anybody here that's not born again? Is there anybody here you want to give your life to Jesus Christ today? You must be born again. Except the man be born again and cannot see the kingdom of God. Don't you want eternal life? Don't you want your sins forgiven? Don't you want the blessings that only God can give you? If you're here and you say, I've never been born again. Or maybe I was saved, Pastor, but I, I turned away from God. 
And I need to come back to God. I need to surrender to Him. Just lift your hand. Anybody at all. Maybe you're watching online. Anyone at all. Just lift your hand. Because I want to help you today. God wants to help you today. God wants to help you get on the right track. Now for those that raised your hand or you wish you raised your hand, everybody out loud, pray this prayer together. Lord God, I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. I believe Jesus is alive here right now. Father, I repent of all my sin. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord, for saving me, washing me in the blood of Jesus, and for giving me eternal life. I believe I receive salvation right now in Jesus' name. I will never be the same. I give you my all. I surrender to you. I dedicate my life to you, Lord, because I want everything that you have for me. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Now, if you need healing in your body and you want, you want us to pray for you right now, come on down right now. Come on down right now. And the rest of you saints, just stretch your hands out. Begin to pray in the Spirit if you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you're not, just pray in faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say it out loud. I believe with hands laid on me, I will receive my healing. This is my day. This is my time. Healing is mine. I no longer will live with sickness and disease. I'm ready to receive by faith in the name of Jesus. All right, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's it. Just take it. It's yours. Hallelujah. Receive in the name of Jesus. That's it. Just take it. Receive healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Devil, I break your power over these who come today. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's yours. Take it right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's yours. Devil, I break your power off of her in Jesus' name. It's yours right now. I break the power of the devil off your mind, off your body. Be healed. Be made whole. Restoration is yours in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's it right there. It's yours, sister. Take it right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the healing power. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory. My. Which one? <laughs> Be healed, sister. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Yeah, yeah. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, now lift your hands and begin to thank God it's done. Hold fast to your confession of faith. Go write it down. Write down the day's time, the date, and begin to say, I believe this date, this time, I believe I received my healing. I believe the healing power of God working in my body. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come here for a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop there. You don't have to go nowhere. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse all of this disease that's attacked your body. Devil, you are a liar. The blood of Jesus is against you. I put the blood of Jesus on her from the sole, top of her head to the soles of her feet. I thank you, Lord, the healing power is working in her body. I curse every cancer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I thank you, Lord, that she is healed. It is done. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. My. Stand up, Logan. Come here. Come here. There's a lot of hands on you. There's an anointing that's transferred into your life. An anointing that will be evident as you open your mouth and begin to speak and people will begin to see the change and they shall know and see the call that is upon you. So walk with me, says the Lord. Fellowship with me. 
Be very aware of your surroundings and the things that would try to distract you. For the days ahead, I will teach you many things. I will open your eyes unto revelation that you have never seen before. New things shall you see. New things shall begin to happen in your life. Relax. Wait on me, saith the Lord. For the time is very, very near when people will know that my hand is upon you. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. So I just walked by him and the Holy Ghost said, lay hands on him. Lay hands on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody here needs deliverance. Listen to me, folks. I, a lot of people are robbed because of pride. But they don't want anybody to ever think, well, uh, they were doing this or they were doing that. Well, let me just go ahead and tell y'all something. I drank like a fish and I smoked like a locomotive. All right? Come on, folks. But thank God for deliverance. And the Holy Ghost said, I want to deliver somebody. And you don't even have to tell me what it is. Just say, Lord, I'm going to get my deliverance right now. Just come on and take it. Just come on and take your deliverance right now. You say, I've been bound by this thing. Now, I'm telling you something. God delivered me from smoking. God delivered my wife the night she got born again from smoking. I mean, you heard us never even had another desire for one. He delivered me from all this stuff. He delivered me from pornography. Folks, listen, you've got to understand. You cannot let the devil sit there and lie to you. Well, what are people going to think about you? What are people going to say? Do you want your deliverance or not? If you want it, come get it. Praise God. Because it's the anointing, not me. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So anybody know, real quick, run up here right now. You say, I'm going to get my deliverance right now. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. You ready for it, brother? Take it right now in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is yours in the name of Jesus. Never again. Never again. I break the power of it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Off of your life right now. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise God. Praise God. Throw your hands up, brother. Glory to Now, I break the power of it off of you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I tell you what, the Lord's cleaning the house today. Hallelujah. He'll clean your house. Your body is the temple, the house of the Holy Spirit. And he wants to clean it. Glory to God. Be free in Jesus' name. Free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Mm. We thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, thank you so much, Father. We give you honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Right now, be free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. She wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. She is free. Now she wants to be filled. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All right, sister, listen to me. They spoke as the Spirit gave the utterance. The mistake a lot of people wait, make is they wait for the Holy Ghost to speak. But it, they spoke, the Holy Ghost gave the utterance. So as soon as I lay my hands on you yes. and pray, just open your mouth, trusting the Holy Ghost to fill you and to give you utterance of speaking in tongues. Okay? Right now, be filled with the Holy Ghost now in Jesus' name. Yeah, just, just, just let it go. Just let it flow from your belly. Just let it flow. Just let it flow. Oh, thank you, Lord, for filling her with the Holy Ghost and power. Glory to God. She'll never be the same. Just keep ministering to her right there. Hallelujah. Anybody else? You say today, I'm saved. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want power. I want this anointing. 
to minister to other people. If that's you, just come on. Hallelujah. He'll fill you right now. Glory to God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord good? I just appreciate y'all so much. And I encourage y'all. Uh, when you come in next Sunday, kind of press forward a little bit. Let's try to make room in the back, you know, for the, the guests that are coming. Because of the move of God that's coming, we've got to be ready, okay? We've got to be watching. We've got to be loving. We've got to reach out. We've got to let people know that we care about them. We love them. Jesus loves them. And he wants to do wonderful things in their lives, okay? So that means we may have to sacrifice some things. We may have to sacrifice some of your comfort. We may have to sacrifice your favorite chair. Amen? I just want you to know I love you and I appreciate you so much. Don't forget, we is tonight. We've only done part one on identify yourself. There's a teaching on you understanding who you are in Christ. It's very important that you know this. Your faith will get stronger and stronger as you identify yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? All right.